On this episode, I discuss the cowardly act of a black man who guns down a white police officer in cold blood. College students across the country are assigned a public finance textbook written by none other than the Obamacare architect Jonathan Gruber. And it's the rise of the mutant lice. And you'll never guess the reason. Today on The Common Constitutionalist. You're listening to The Common Constitutionalist, broadcasting from an undisclosed location. We're from the prying eyes of establishment black governments. Well, the Daily Mail had it just about on the nosy when they wrote, Cold-blooded and cowardly, sheriff's deputy shot dead execution style while filling up his patrol car at a Houston gas station. Apparently what happened is this uh, police deputy, Darren, I think it's Goforth, he's 47, he's got two kids, all he did was stop to buy gas in a northwest Harris County gas station, and a guy approached him from behind and basically pumped him full of lead for no reason, no provocation, nothing at all. All he was doing was just stopping to get some gas. wasn't bothering anybody. There wasn't any complaints. I don't. There was no complaints that this guy was a some sort of serial racist or some other such nonsense. He was just uh, he was just gunned down in cold blood. No no if ands or buts. And I don't know if you're going to see this one on the nightly news. Probably not. You're probably not going to see this on MN, MSNBC. They might do a little bitty snippet of un uh, here, well basically because he's an unidentified man. Um, that's the way CNN would report it. If they have to report this, this is the way the the mainstream media is going to report it, that a uh, 47-year-old Houston police officer was gunned down in cold blood by an unti- unidentified assailant. And that's all they're going to say about it. They're not going to say it was a black man because they don't want to bring the racial uh, implication. So I realize that uh, what black lives matter, but I'm guessing that this guy's life doesn't matter. And even after, what did they say here? After Goforth fell to the ground, the suspect, a black male wearing a t-shirt and shorts, just kept firing bullets into his body in what colleagues described as a cold-blooded and cowardly execution. And that's exactly what it is. I don't know what this guy's problem is. I don't know what his beef is. But apparently this Goforth guy, married with two kids, served 10 years in the Harris County Sheriff's Office, didn't have a problem with anybody, from what I understand. And this guy is still on the loose. Um, as of, I think it was this morning when I printed this thing out, um, this guy is still out on the loose. He's a 5'10 black male wearing white t-shirt and red shorts. He's uh, thought to be around between the ages of 20 and 25, and he is still on the loose. No one knows what the beef is with this guy. No one knows the first thing about him. He's completely unidentified other than he's driving a red or maroon colored uh, Ford Ranger pickup with an extended cab. That's all they know about this guy. They don't have a license plate. They don't have squat to go on. But um, it, this is, a, this is a, a tragedy is what it is. It's, I, I'm, I like to say it's one thing if, this, if the police officer was belligerent or if something happened or whatever. Um, Nobody deserves to die like this, certainly. And from what I understand, this guy has had a stellar police record, um, good public servant, good cop, and he was just stopping to get some gas, completely carefree, and uh, the dude just came up behind him, started pumping him full of lead. Just absolutely incredible. Where are all the protesters on this one? Where are the Black Lives Matter people? Um... Are they going to defend this guy? Are they just going to skip over it like it never happened? Some fantasy? The um, Harris County Sheriff, uh, Ron Hickman, said, I've never in law enforcement, he's been in law enforcement for 45 years. He says he's ne- he doesn't recall another incident this cold-blooded or cowardly. 
it strikes us at the heart of the public servants. And the Harris County DA, Devin Anderson, added, It's an act of cowardice and brutality the likes of which I have never seen. And it's just, it's just absolutely unbelievable. But again, if you see this on the evening news, it'll just be some, depending on the evening news, maybe Fox will broadcast it or something like that. But uh, as far as the mainstream media, CBS, NBC, ABC, CNN, MSNBC, all those other nimrods, they, if they have to report this, if they're forced to report it because of public pressure or something, um, that's the way they're going to report it. Unidentified man, period. That's it. Now, if this was some guy, unidentified man, carrying a Confederate flag or something, um, or, you know, known to be racist or whatever, but unidentified white man, you know darn well it would be splashed all over the media. Black Lives Matter would be down there in two seconds flat, and uh, Al Sharpton would be holding rallies and prayer vigils. But evidently, from what I understand from updates now, that um, around uh, 2.30 this afternoon, authorities uh, converged on a property in um, around the Houston area, and they took a man into custody. They haven't identified him. There's been They haven't released any motive to the shooting or whatnot. We don't even know if they've got the right guy, but I guess they did find somebody um, and arrested him and are holding him and his name isn't being released, and there's no other information on it, other than he's a cold-blooded SOB that has a race problem that has been or can be directly tied, I'd be willing, I'll bet my last dollar on it, to um, these Black Lives Matter people, the president, Al Sharpton, Jackson, all these other race pimps, that stir up this black anger, this fake black anger toward white police officers, and I guarantee you that when it finally comes out that that's what this guy's going to be. If he's not just unbalanced to begin with, well, of course he's unbalanced. You don't do this without being unbalanced. But uh, this is just, this is unbelievable. I, I, don't, I don't know, you know, everybody knows it's got to stop. Or at least some, most people know it has to stop. Some people thrive on this stuff. This is how they make their money. This is how they make their fame and their fortune by this kind of crap. Not this kind of stuff, black on white violence. It's the white on black violence that they make their money on. And they stir up the, the black population. They get them all riled up with a bunch of fake, phony arguments. And then they're stunned while they fake being shocked when some a uh, mixed-up black guy goes out there and kills a white cop. And everybody wonders why. Why Why on earth could this possibly happen? Of course it could possibly happen. Look at the look at the race war, basically, that we've got going in this country, on fully promoted by the left, period. So, I, I don't know. I, I know it's got to come to a... It's going to ha- come to a head. It's got to stop. I just don't know how it's going to happen. Not with the current crop of lefties we've got run in this country, and not with the current crop of black activists that keep whipping them up into a tirade. You're listening to the common constitution. Let the truth be known. So we all remember Jonathan Gruber, don't we? He's the Obamacare architect, the genius behind Obamacare. Remember the guy that said the um, he was counting on, in order to pass the Obamacare law, he had to count on the stupidity of the American voter? Yeah, that guy. The guy who said that um, the lack of transparent, transparency in the law um, helped us pass it. And, that you know, the, the one Pelosi said you have to pass it to find out what's in it. Yeah, that guy. Well, it turns out that Gruber has a book. It's called Public Finance and Public Policy, and it's mandatory reading. Dig this. Gruber, this dirtbag, um, the fabulous economist, economist, Jonathan Gruber, the dirtbag of Obamacare, is mandatory. His book, 
Public Finance and Public Policy is mandatory reading this fall for students at institutions such as Princeton, George Mason University, UNC Chapel Hill, Colorado State, Portland State, Northwestern, um, and Washington University in St. Louis, as well as many others. Can you believe this crap? Uh, well, yeah, I guess you can. <laughs> yeah, I guess you kind of can. Um, because it's, it's just, it's like a, some sort of weird running joke or gag or something like that. That, um, you look at these places like Princeton and UNC Chapel Hill and these places, they are liberal meccas. And, and they're, and they're like Harvard and Dartmouth and Princeton and all these Ivy League schools. People go and they get degrees so they can work in government. That's what they do. Government studies, public policy and finance. I mean, honestly. And then they, they learn from Jonathan Gruber. Gee, you wonder why the, <laughs> the freaking country is so screwed up and how our politicians and our bureaucrats are such lion sacks of crap. This is why. Because they learn this kind of crap in college from people like Jonathan Gruber. His textbook, I guess, has been out since 2007 or maybe even earlier. So kids the whole time have been learning this stuff, and they get out of college, and this is what they know. They know how to lie and cheat and steal in government, and this is what we get. Hooray. Now there is a um, this Scott McConnell. He's an economics professor at Eastern Oregon University. He said to the, um, yeah, I was wondering who. I I printed this thing out to to for, as you know for notes for the podcast and and once again just like last week I forgot to print it print who it was from but then I see that he sent an email this Scott McConnell sent an email to the College Fix so there you go that's the College Fix so thank you College Fix at any rate uh, this Scott McConnell economics professor at Eastern Oregon University said. The fact is, Jonathan's Gruber te- uh, Gr- Jonathan Gruber's text is widely considered as the standard text for that course. And you wonder, again, you wonder why government is the way it is. It's because the kids study stuff like this in college, and this is what they learn, this is how they get indoctrinated, and then they get out and they go directly from school into government. There's no private sector. Do not pass go or collect $200 unless it's $200 of of taxpayer money. And you'll love this one. Um, uh, They say that they write that as for Groover's textbook, it's described on Amazon as the first textbook to, I, I love this. I hate this, but I love this. The first textbook to truly reflect the way public policy is created and implemented. Again, you wonder why government is so utterly and completely screwed up, how you think it couldn't possibly get any better, or or there, there, there must be a way to counteract it or something. There's no freaking way you're going to counteract government. You're not going to, unless you start firing everybody currently in government, and replace them with private sector people that have not been tainted or blinded by this public sector nonsense, public policy and public finance book by Jonathan Gruber, nothing will ever get any better in government. Because this, this is what they're... I, I just, I'm stunned. I just cannot believe. And these guys hold him, these professors hold him in such high regard. It's just amazing. It's just stunning. And then you wonder why, even after this time that has gone by and that everybody with a brain that has gone through this Obamacare nonsense so far, just so far, knows it is a complete unmitigated disaster, um, people in government, and you would think the unwashed, but they're, I'm sure they're highly educated people, think that Obamacare has, has been a rousing success so far and you want to know the reason why (laughs) these bureaucrats think that Obamacare is a success well here you go um in 
the 2007 edition dedicates an entire uh, the edition of his public finance and public policy textbook that that is required reading for um, students in government studies. The 2007 edition dedicates an entire chapter chapter to the topic of <laughs> of healthcare reform. Yeah, they're going to reform it, all right. And here's a nice little added tidbit. In this chapter, the, the chapter uh, dedicated to the topic of health care reform, that's like an oxymoron, but anyway, in this chapter, Gruber describes health care reforms passed by Mitt Romney in 2006 in Massachusetts, right, to which he had contributed, of course, which included forcing <laughs> forcing people to purchase health insurance, then created a state-run exchange through which people could buy the health insurance plans from providers. Gruber was even appointed to an inaugural board as an inaugural board member uh, for the uh, Massachusetts State Exchange. And there you go. So, in fact, ev- all the people that, uh, including Romney, who said that Romney Care wasn't going to be anything like. Uh, or Obamacare wouldn't be anything like Romney care. Uh, they are absolutely 100% wrong, and that's because Gruber did both of them. So why wouldn't they be identical to one another? And by the way, Romney care is an utter disaster in the state of Massachusetts. But, uh, that's a, just to be, just, you know, as an aside. So, um, you wonder why the government is completely screwed up. You wonder why, <laughs> you wonder why Bureaucrats think the way they do. This is why they think. Uh, this is why they think the way they do. Period. You are listening to Common Constitution. Let the truth be known. So selfies. So, <laughs> where do I even begin with selfies? Where do I begin with the self-absorbed, self-important people who take selfies, who live for <laughs> for selfies, self-portraits of themselves, selfies? It's the most ridiculous thing mankind has thought of so far. I am proud to say that I've never taken a selfie. I've never been in a selfie. I don't want to be in a selfie. I don't want to be pushed up against a bunch of other people's heads, squashed into a picture, to take some, again, self-important picture of a, a, a bunch of nimrods and send it to another bunch of nimrods. That's just my personal opinion. Otherwise, I got nothing strong to say about selfies. But at any rate, this one is as gross as it gets, and it's kind of funny at the same time. It says that taking a selfie isn't as harmless as you might think. The social media trend is causing, you ready, an infestation of head lice amongst older children, a pediatrician has warned. Icky. Now, none of my kids have ever had head lice. Thank heavens, knock on wood. Of course, I've got a glass table, but, you know, so knock on glass, whatever. But um, I've known other parents with kids that have had head lice, and it is a grody thing. It's a disgusting thing. you got to, you know, shampoo them out, comb them out with that little lice comb, and it's just, it's just gross, man. And now a Wisconsin physician, Sharon Rink, has dubbed the phenomenon social me- social media lice and says that the head lice are the and, and and they're actually mutating actually the mutant head lice are being caused by group group selfie snaps that cause heads to bump together isn't that fabulous and disgusting at the same time this pediatrician uh, pedi- pediatrician pe- pediatrician um was uh, interviewed by this uh uh, news crew, W-B-W-B-A-Y, W-B-A-Y, I guess in Wisconsin, probably Green Bay-ish maybe, W-B-A-Y. She said that teenagers don't usually get lice because they're not sharing hats and things like that. 
and lice can jump, so the only way they can transmit lice from one head to another is by touching their heads together, and this is what's happening in these stupid selfies. And because selfies are becoming much more popular with the younger set, as they see their older siblings and even their Nimrod parents doing these silly things, uh, this uh, person, Martha McQuillan, she runs a, <laughs> she's a lice treatment expert who runs two lice treatment centers in California called Knitless Noggins. I mean, mommy, I know what I want to do when I grow up. What's that, dear? I want to become a lice, tra- a lice treatment expert. Oh, well, that's fabulous, dear. But she has seen a um, dramatic uptick in the incidence of lice amongst younger people. But uh, some do not agree that the selfie is the is the uh, is the head lice pro- uh, problem with the head lice. Uh, this Katie Shepard, she's founder and CEO of the Shepard Institute for Lice Solutions. What the heck, man? How do these people get into these fields? I mean, I understand why people become oncologists and stuff. You know, they had a relative die of cancer, or you know, their mom or dad, or maybe they've had cancer. And they vowed that they, this is what they want to do. They want to cure cancer. So they go into oncology or something like that. But to be CEO of Shepherd Institute for Life Solutions, how does one even venture down that road? But I digress. It's a non-profit, non-profit organization researching head lice. She disagrees, apparently. She says that according to re, uh, recent research, head lice have developed a high level of resistance to the most popular treatments and that more and more schools are being less proactive about the problem. Man, this is just, it's, <laughs> I don't know about you, but it's, it's making my skin crawl. So whether these lice are, are mutant head lice or whether they're just regular old head lice that are, well, I guess they are mutant head lice because they're developing a, what does it say, a high level of resistance to most popular treatments? But apparently, from what other research, man, there's a lot of research on head lice. What other research has, has concluded is that ordinary hair conditioner, just regular old hair conditioner, removes head lice eggs as effectively as the uh, special products that you spend 50 times as much and you go see the, uh, the people at, uh, Knitless Noggins, the treatment centers in California, uh, fly out to California, have my head lice removed. So I guess the moral of the story is, is if you develop head lice, just use regular old conditioner to get rid of them. I guess you still need that silly lice comb or whatnot. But apparently what happens is, is that the untreated hair, the, the eggs, it's just so gross, but the eggs just stick to the untreated hair and they won't come off. But with a treated, uh, conditioned hair, it uh, makes each strand more slippery and you can slide the old eggs right off and yee, grody. So anyway, the moral of the story is if you get head lice, treat it with conditioner, comb them out, and you'll be good to go and stop taking so many dang selfies. There you go. This is the Common Constitutional signing off. Y'all have a good day. I'm going to go shampoo my hair because I'm completely grossed out. <laughs>